Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In the previous chapter, we have learned about the different types of AM, their generation and transmission. So in today's lecture, we will see how to receive them. At the receiver, signals from the various transmitters at different frequencies are present and in addition to this noise is also present. So the receiver is expected to receive the wanted signal from this crowd of the signals and thus the function that a receiver must perform in order to receive the wanted signal is are as follows. The first is we have to select the desired signal from all the other unwanted signal. Second we have to amplify that desired signal. Then third demodulate the amplified signal that is we have to perform here the process of demodulation uh, which is opposite to the modulation operation and after demodulation the original modulating signal is obtained which must be amplified and last we have to apply that amplified demodulated signal to the loudspeaker. Then uh, after that we will see here what are the different types of receiver. So there are two types of receivers the first is TRF that is tuned radio frequency receiver and second is super heterodyne receiver. So out of them the TRF receiver is the oldest and simplest one but it has many shortcomings. So the uh, and the second is the super heterodyne receiver uh, which is the most popular and widely used receiver uh, due to many of its advantages over the TRF receiver. So let us discuss them one by one. The first is a TRF receiver that is tune radio frequency receiver. So here the block diagram of this uh, TRF receiver is shown in this figure. So as seen from this figure, this receiver consists of uh, two or three tunable RF amplifier. This is first RF amplifier, second RF amplifier. Uh, these amplifiers are tuned uh, simultaneously to the desired signal frequency. Uh, then next is the detector, AF amplifier and power amplifier follow the tuned RF amplifiers. So let us see here how it works. The AM transmission takes place in the medium wave band or we can say MW or medium wave band or in the short wave band and the frequency range uh, for the mid or we can say for the medium wave band is from 530 kilohertz to 1640 kilohertz. So here different radio stations operate at the different frequencies in this range of frequency. Uh, for example, if the Pune station operates at a frequency of 800 kilohertz, uh, then the operation of the TRF receiver uh, we can perform as the first is uh, due to the electromagnetic waves uh, which are passing over the receiving antenna, the voltage is induced in it. So that uh, this induced signal consists of signals from various transmitting stations. And here all these signals are received through this receiving antenna. Then the RF amplifiers are tuned simultaneously to select and amplify the desired signal and to reject all other signals. Okay. So here tuning means we have to adjust the resonant frequency of the tuned circuit which is equal to the desired frequency. Uh, then after that the gang tuning, this is the gang tuning which means that here the simultaneous tuning of tune circuits in all the RF amplifier stages using the GAN capacitor. So next is the amplified signal uh, is then demodulated or we can say detected by this uh, detector and the carrier signal is bypassed and only the modulating signal is recovered in this process. So last the detected signal here at the output of this detector we get a detected signal which is amplified using this uh, audio amplifier and after that this audio amplifier will pass the output signal to this power amplifier and given to this loudspeaker for the reproduction. Okay, So during that process uh, there are certain problems, there are certain issues uh, which are occur in TRF receiver. Uh, even though here the uh, operation is simple but still uh, this receiver has some serious problems. Uh, they are the first problem is instability second is variation in the bandwidth over the tuning range third problem is that 
insufficient selectivity at high frequencies and poor adjacent channel rejection so here uh, let us discuss them one by one let us see first point that is instability so the overall gain of the rf amplifier stage is very very high and so a very small feedback signal is from its output to the input side with correct phase uh, can initiate oscillations in the rf amplifier stage uh, if we take example here uh, if the gain is uh, 40000 uh, then to make the a beta product uh, this am gain product bhi bolte hain uh, we have to make that gain product is equal to 1 and so the required feedback signal is only 1 upon 40000 of the output okay so this feedback takes place through the stray capacitance in the circuit and the reactance of c decreases at higher frequencies which results in the increased feedback okay jiski wajah se aapka feedback badh jata hai so thus the possibility of the oscillatory behavior and therefore instability will increase with the increased frequency okay so once the oscillations begin the rf amplifier cannot amplify the desired signal so that's why there is a instability in the trf receiver second problem is variation in the bandwidth over the tuning range means what when the receiver is tuned and it is tuned to the carrier frequency that is fo and the tuned circuit is expected to select the carrier and the sideband of the desired signal that means uh, it must have the adequate bandwidth for a tuned circuit so here the bandwidth is nothing but bandwidth is equal to resonant frequency divided by q here fr is nothing but resonant frequency and q is the quality factor so let us assume that the bandwidth is 10 kilohertz and this will remain constant at all the carrier frequencies agar ye parameter aapka change nahi hoga that means ye agar constant rahega then we have to here change the value of fr okay so if we take here the value of fr or fc is equal to 535 kilohertz then we can easily calculate the value of q which is equal to q is equal to 535 divided by 10 that is 53.5 okay and in second condition if fr is equal to fc that is 1640 kilohertz and at the same bandwidth of 10 kilohertz the required value of q will be 1640 divided by 10 okay so here we will get the value of quality factor is equal to 164 that means what the value of q is practically unobtainable due to the various losses which are taking place at high frequency so at the most we can obtain the q of 120 at this frequency and now the corresponding bandwidth will be what bandwidth is equal to fr divided by q the value of fr is 1640 kilohertz divided by the value of q that is quality factor is 120 then we will get bandwidth is equal to 13.7 kilohertz ओके दैट मीन्स स्टार्टिंग में हमने जो क्यू का वैल्यू था हमारा वो हमने बहुत ही छोटा मिला था आपको दैट इज 53.5 थ्री पॉइंट फाइव देन आफ्टर दैट द क्यू आपको जो मिला था ये था आपका 164 और थर्ड कंडीशन में जो आपका बैंडविड था वो था आपका 13.7 पॉइंट सेवन किलो हर्ट्स ओके सो हियर द रिक्वायर्ड बैंडविड इज टेन किलो हर्ट्स सो ड्यू टू द इंक्रीज बैंडविड द रिसीवर विल पिकअप द एडजस्टन चैनल अलॉन्ग विद द डिजायर्ड वन सो ड्यू टू दैट वेरिएशन इन बैंडविड over the tuning range there are some problems which are occurred in trf receiver okay then third problem is the insufficient selectivity high at the high frequencies and poor adjacent channel rejection so in that uh, due to increased bandwidth at higher frequencies the ability of that the trf receiver to select the desired signal and to reject all other is seriously affected and this is called as the loss of selectivity okay and due to this problem of instability and poor adjacent channel rejection the trf receivers are not used so they are replaced by the second type of receiver that is nothing but super heterodyne receiver okay so here the problem in the trf receivers are solved in the, this receiver by converting every selected rf signal to the fixed lower frequency which is called as the intermediate frequency that is if this is the if that is fo minus fs 
okay so this intermediate frequency concept is used in a super heterodyne receiver this frequency contains the same modulation as the original carrier and the if signal is then amplified and detected to get back the modulated signal as the if is lower than the lowest rf signal frequency so the possibility of oscillations and instability is minimized also the required value of q for a constant bandwidth does not depend on the frequency of desired signal because the if is constant that is intermediate frequency is constant and which is same for all the incoming rf signal so that the super heterodyne receiver solve all the problems associated with the trf receivers okay so this is the block diagram of super heterodyne receiver uh, which is shown in this figure let us see how it works the rf amplifier this is the rf stage amplifier this is the receiving antenna this receiving antenna is used to receive the signals at the receiver side then after that the rf amplifier is used to select the unwanted signal and reject all the other signal and reduce the effect of noise then we get here the signal of frequencies fs as the output of this rf stage okay then here we have to use mixer which receives signals from rf amplifier this is rf amplifier and which will also receive signals from this local oscillator this is local oscillator okay here the output is fs and here this local oscillator will generate frequency as fo so these signals are mixed together with the help of this mixer and it will produce the intermediate frequency that is nothing but fo minus fs this is nothing but our intermediate frequency so in order to maintain the constant difference between the local oscillator and the incoming frequency gain tuning is used and this is the simultaneous tuning of rf amplifier mixer and local oscillator and it is achieved by using the gain tuning capacitor okay so after that uh, this intermediate frequency signal is then amplified by one or more if amplifier stages and if amplifier provides most of the gain and the bandwidth requirement of the receiver then therefore here the sensitivity and selectivity of the receiver do not change much with the change in this incoming frequency that is fo minus fs okay then after that this amplified if signal is detected by this detector unit and to recover the original modulating signal this is then amplified and applied to this loudspeaker okay and here we have to use this agc this agc means automatic gain control this circuit control the gain of this rf and if amplifier uh, which is used to maintain the constant output voltage level even when the signal level at the receiver input is fluctuating and this is done by feeding a controlling dc voltage to the rf and if amplifiers so the amplitude of this dc voltage is proportional to the detector आउटपुट ओके आई थिंक ये कंसेप्ट आपको अभी समझ में आया होगा देन आफ्टर दैट लेट एस सी वॉट आर द डिफरेंट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ द रेडियो रिसीवर्स सो द इम्पॉर्टेंट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ द रेडियो रिसीवर्स आर द फर्स्ट इज सेंसिटिविटी सेकेंड इज सिलेक्टिविटी एंड थर्ड इज द फिडिलिटी दीज कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स आर यूजफुल टू जज द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ रेडियो रिसीवर्स and these characteristics are measured under the standard operating conditions okay so let us see first characteristics that is sensitivity curve sensitivity sensitivity is nothing but it is the radio receiver uh, or we can say it is defined as it is the ability to amplify weak signals matlab jo bhi aapke signal weak signal hoge usko amplify karne ka kaam sensitivity karega and it is often uh, defined in terms of the input voltage that must be applied at the input of the receiver to obtain the standard output power so this sensitivity is measured in microvolt or decibel below 1 volt so this figure shows the typical sensitivity curve of the receiver it shows the variation of sensitivity over the medium wave band of frequencies okay so from this curve uh, it is evident that 
the radio receiver is a most sensitive at about 850 kilohertz this is the 850 kilohertz and at this point it is having the highest sensitivity okay and the sensitivity of the receiver is decided by the gain of rf and if amplifier and at the more than 1000 or we can say at 1500 kilohertz frequency which will having the lowest sensitivity okay so the sensitivity measurement is carried out under standard test conditions and the am signal is applied to the receiver through the standard coupling network which is known as a dummy antenna and the output power is measured by replacing the loud speaker by an equal value load resistances okay in short uh, we can say the sensitivity is nothing but it is the ability of the receiver to amplify the weak signals okay second type of characteristic is selectivity so the selectivity of a receiver is its ability to reject unwanted signals why there is a need to reject unwanted signal because as we know that there are n number of frequency components at the receiver side and here we want particular frequency at the receiver side so that's why we have to here reject the unwanted signal and for that selectivity is used so the selectivity is expressed as shown in this figure it shows that the receiver offers the minimum rejection at 950 kilohertz this is 950 kilohertz that is at the tune frequency but the rejection increases as the input signal frequency deviations on both the sides of 950 kilohertz so this is the 950 kilohertz frequency and the selectivity of the super heterodyne receiver is determined by the frequency response characteristics of the if amplifier we know that in super heterodyne receiver we are using if amplifiers and rf stage amplifiers so that we can say the selectivity of that super heterodyne receiver is determined by the frequency response characteristics of the if amplifier okay so the response of the mixer and rf amplifier stages also plays a small but significant role okay so here the selectivity decide the adjacent channel rejection of a receiver third type of characteristic is fidelity so here what is mean by fidelity it is nothing but the ability of a receiver to reproduce all the modulating frequencies equally jitne bhi aapke receiver ke signals aapko milenge usko aapko har ek signal ko yahan pe equally modulate karna hai that means what this fidelity uh, fidelity basically depends on the frequency response of the af amplifier and the typical fidelity curve is as shown in this figure so here we can see this fidelity curve here the high fidelity is essential in order to reproduce the good quality music faithfully that is without introducing any distortion for this it is essential to have a flat frequency response over this a wide range of the audio frequencies and the fidelity curve uh, for the receiver is as shown in this figure and it is basically the frequency response of the af amplifier stage in the receiver so this is all about our today's session i hope you will like and enjoy today we will stop here with motivational quote today's motivational quote for you is dream big start small start now thank you for watching my videos please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you so much